friend was over recently shooting his bow at my targets and he asked me, Grant, why is the bottom of your target so worn out and there's almost no holes up here in the vitals? That was a great question and it made me think, hey, it may be a good time to share a reminder with all of us, myself and you guys included. So all summer long, I shoot this Morel bag target right behind here and that allows me to side in my bow, get everything tweaked just perfectly. I'm shooting a dot. And a problem with shooting a decoy target like this, a life-size target, like this Morel Transformer is, it's really not a dot to aim at, which is the point. You gotta really focus when you're shooting a deer in the field right behind the front leg in its bottom third. I'll explain that in a second, but when you're sighting in your bow, you don't necessarily want to use the transformer because there's not a specific dot. If you hit here and you walk down here and get your arrow and you say, oh, it's still good shots in the vitals, but you're aiming here and as you get further and further back, that gap gets larger. So two target system is really good. I like a bag target, man, this Morel bag target, you can shoot forever and not wear it out and you can really sight in your bow. Get closer or in hunting season, I want to be focused on picking a spot right behind that front leg. As to why my Morel Transformer target is worn out down here, well, the answer is pretty simple. I've had several deer, what's called jump string, or react to the sound of the bow. People say, oh, you shoot a prime, it must be slow. But I just want to share with you, my good friend of mine in Kentucky, big stout guy, man's a fireman, big stout guy, works out all the time, shooting a 70 pound Matthews, great bow company, Matthews bow. At 28 yards, big old buck comes in, and he's all excited, velvet season, man. Bucky's after, woof! Arrow goes right over the back. But not like this. I want you to notice that buck's head was down. We've talked about this in previous episodes and we're shared a link so you can go rewatch that. But when their head is down, this head is down, and they hear something coming, well, they raise that head up to identify the source. And when they're raising the head up, this is pivoting down. The pivot point's right here in the shoulder. So when they sling that head up, they're dropping their vitals and they drop to lock these back muscles like in sprinter position. Think about a sprinter in the starting blocks. They're getting down and loading those, those hand muscles to take off really quickly. They can't do that quick takeoff in this fully standing up erect position. When they're standing their head up, a lot of people don't like to shoot because they say, well, the deer is already alert. But if you think about it, they have to drop much more, only at the speed of gravity. They can't sling their head up, which pushes the vitals down. You have a much better chance of the arrow arriving before the vitals sink. So you may think, man, my bow is faster than either your friend in Kentucky or your bow. I got another really close friend, just went on a great elk hunt out in New Mexico. He's got the latest, greatest crossbow. That baby's flying about 450 feet a second. I mean, it is getting downfield. Shoots out a large elk that responds to the call, so the elk's a little bit alert. And watch this elk clearly drop. Now, its head is up, so it doesn't drop as much as the whitetail we just showed you. Even at that, that elk still drops, and my buddy's arrow, which is on target, flies right over and he doesn't punch his elk tag on that opportunity. Now let's go back a few years on the same property. I got to hunt that property a few years ago and it was the first year in a long time that had archery hunters. The elk there clearly were not conditioned to archery hunting. Now, you know, sound of bows, arrows. No. Most critters just respond to a sound coming at them that they don't know what it is, especially whitetails or elk, by getting out of Dallas. They don't turn around like a pit bull and try to fight. They're just going the other way. But I had an opportunity at an elk that was fighting. I mean, just all jacked up, spinning around, fighting. He wasn't paying attention because he was trying to hurt this other elk. There was some receptive cows in the area. We busted the herd and got in there on them. Awesome hunt. I shot this elk at 67 yards. Remember, elk have a giant kill zone. 67 yards. The arrow's clearly going a long time in the air to get to him, but he doesn't drop. In fact, I did hit low because this elk doesn't drop and my shot was probably off a little bit. 67 yards. Also, that's a little bit further away and this elk is all jacked up. 
he may not heard that bow shoot quite as much. It was a prime bow again. So not all critters drop. There's a multitude of reasons why they don't. My good friend Bill Winky shoots a Hoyt, great shot, shoots an 80 pound bow, great hunter, has killed hundreds of deer with the bow. And he still will have deer drop on his arrow. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Moultrie Mobile, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Hunt Stand, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, National Land Realty, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. So putting all this together, the safest shot by far is the bottom third of the vitals. Really low, matter of fact, when I say low, I'm thinking about where the white line, the belly hair meets the brown line, which is really low. Because I just count on every deer dropping at least an inch or two. In my entire career, I've never seen my observation or heard someone else talk about a deer jumping up and the arrow going under. It's either a low shot and the deer doesn't move, but I've never heard a deer jump up for the arrow to go under. And that's because, again, they're gonna drop down, load these big muscles to sprint away from danger. So putting all this together, when you're practicing, it's not okay if your arrow's kinda lobbing in here between here and here. If you think fist size and they drop, you're still in the kill zone, you're in the vital. So even though season is open in most states, don't stop practicing. Focus on that bottom third. Make sure your groups, at the distance, you're gonna take a shot at deer. If you're a 20 yard shooter, 30 yard shooter, you need to be stacking them in at that maximum distance, the size of your fist. Ooh, I love that. I wanna take a little break from hunting and share this, just in hopes Everyone could have a better experience. It's a bad feeling when you miss a deer or goodness, hope you don't wound a deer. It's a bad feeling. So keep those groups tight, focus on the bottom third, and most importantly, get outside and enjoy creation. Even shooting your bow, practicing is a great way to get a little exercise. Get outside and enjoy creation. And more importantly, you know, as intense as we hunters are about getting all tuned up to make an ethical kill shot, Let's be even more focused on learning the Creator's will for life and applying it daily. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.